this is probably the most expensive car in this country. It costs 55,000 pounds. But before you're wondering how I got conned out of the other 52,000, perhaps I'd better say that you can't actually buy this car. It's a test bed, a prototype containing many of the devices that you should be seeing fitted to cars over the next 10 years or so. You see, the motor car hasn't really changed basically over the last 30 years. It's still a mechanical animal with some electrics, whereas the aeroplane has changed tremendously thanks to the introduction of electronics into its working systems. And that's what this car's got. It's packed with sensors and controllers that aim to make this car and any other built like it more efficient, safer, easier to drive, less dirty in terms of pollution, and hopefully cheaper to run. Now the most obvious innovation is down here. This panel gives readouts when things go wrong in your car, like this. Now, as each one of these readouts comes up, it's accompanied, as you can probably hear, by a high tone that reminds you to look down and find out what's gone wrong. If I just turn this tone off, it does itself go off eventually. The system that operates this readout is amazingly simple. You simply run a wire all around the car, connect it up to the bits that you want to know about when they go wrong, and as one of these things does go wrong, it puts its own special voltage onto that wire. Back here, behind the readout, a discriminator says, ah, two volts on the wire, that means the oil pressure isn't what it ought to be, and it puts up the relevant information on this readout. Now here on the steering column is a device called Auto Cruise that ought to take the anchor leg out of motorway driving. You simply set the speed you want to cruise at and activate the system, and sensors picking up information from the speedometer automatically control the accelerator independently of you. Let me show you what I mean. We're doing 60, let me set 70 on it. I'll activate it, take my foot off the accelerator, and there she goes, up to 70. Now, as soon as you touch the brake, of course, the whole thing disengages, so it's perfectly safe. Oh, and talking about brakes, uh, something's been done to them too. You know that awful moment when you're driving along in wet weather, something happens and you hit the brakes and you go into a spin. Well, that can't happen in this car because sensors know the natural speed at which a, a wheel should slow down when you put the brakes on. And if the wheel slows down much faster than that, the sensors say to themselves, ah, we've got a wheel lock coming here, and they take the pressure off the brake just enough to give you a back to that bit of wheel spin that you need to maintain control. Now, let me just go off the motorway and I'll show you a couple of other things. You can't rev this engine above what it ought to do. You see, the sensors know how many revs this engine ought to do, and if you try to push it above that, they simply cut out the extra firings. Listen to this. You're going to hear them there. And of course, ignition is totally electronic, so that it's easy for maintenance. There's very few moving parts. And no matter what time of day or how cold it is, you always get a good big surge of power when you want to turn on. And in here, in among all those sensors I was telling you about, and there are three right there as a matter of interest, is the final refinement, this. It's a monitored petrol injection system that gives each cylinder exactly the right amount of petrol after taking into consideration the air temperature outside, the atmosphere pressure, the kind of ground you're going over, the engine temperature, the engine revs, the engine load, and several other factors. All that to give you absolutely peak performance every time. So there you are, the car of the future for £55,000. I'm taking it back. It's not the cost. I don't like the colour.